Okay. 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 So I think many of you uh, are looking for like what what happens at the job on the first day or going forward, like how it works. You might be wondering about some uh, real time things and everything, right? So I just wanted to walk you guys through. I mean, this session won't be too much in technical, I would say, but I will give you overall uh, project based understanding. Okay. Sure. So, yeah. One second. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, a couple of things, okay. Uh, whenever uh, you're starting to work as a data analyst, right? As a first point, like whenever uh, you join, like any consultant, whenever they join, okay? The client will give one laptop, okay? Okay, so this laptop for you to log in, they will create a user ID. Okay, they will create a LAN ID, whatever they call it, different ways. So basically, the user ID that they give to login, user ID slash password, it will be an add and account. Okay, add and account. What add and account means? It's a Active Directory. It's a Microsoft product. Active Directory is a Microsoft product, okay? So it's an Active Microsoft in Microsoft Active Directory. They will have they will have the entire user base for the entire organization. So all the users are created in Microsoft Active Directory, and each user will get their own credentials, add in credentials to login. Okay. So this is from Microsoft Active Directory. Okay. So, so you get the credentials. Okay. Then you log in. Okay. Sometimes what will happen is they have something called uh, multi factor authentication. So you, you guys know what authentication means? Anybody knows what authentication means? Having some user, yeah, I mean, ID and password and all. Yes, yes. So user ID and password. So whenever you log in, whenever you type the username and password and hit on enter key, the process that happens is called authentication. Okay. So your username and uh, your password are validated okay and with that you will be authenticated into the system okay that is a single factor authentication if you're directly log if you're able to log into the system directly it's a single factor authentication sometimes what will happen is uh, once you log in with your credentials okay then an email or a text message will be sent to your phone as a secondary form of authentication, okay? And that is called multi-factor authentication. So once you log in originally with your credentials, okay, the next time, uh, as soon as you, as soon as that screen is done, again, you will log in with, there'll, there'll be a code that will be sent to your email or a text message, or there will be a, there will be an app on the phone called Authenticator, okay? So there you will get a push notification. You, you guys are aware of push notification, right? 
on the phone, whatever notification we get, we call it a push notification. Okay. So there also we have to approve it to log in. I mean, it depends on the client. Some clients, they just have user ID and password to log in. And some clients, they have multi-factor authentication. So to log in, you have to, apart from the user ID and password, you also have to do a secondary form of authentication by email. Email, they'll send a code or text message, they'll send a code. Or authenticator app, you will get a push notification, like uh, you'll get approved uh, with the push notification. So you open that and you click on approve. Okay. Now you are logged into the laptop. Okay. So this multi factor authentication or MFA, it's also used for apps also. Sometimes it's not used for, uh, not used to log in, in general login like to the machine, but sometimes they use it for the applications, like different applications that you're logging in the computer into the laptop. In the laptop, there are some applications that will be running, right? So to log into those applications, sometimes they enable multi-factor authentication, where again, you have to give your user ID, password, and again, uh, do this authentication, okay? And there is something called as single sign-on, okay? SSO, okay? So what this means is that instead of giving a user ID and password for each and every application, let's say I have Tableau, okay? I have Tableau tool, right? I have Power BI tool, okay? Uh, so all of them have a URL, right, to log in. So while logging in there, instead of creating a separate new user account and uh, user credentials for each and every tool that you have, database, Microsoft Outlook, Okay, so all these tools are generally used by the organization. Okay, any organizations you any organization you join, you will have all these tools running on your machine. Any and not all, but a combination of these tools. Okay, so the user ID and password you use here at the beginning to log into the machine will be the same user ID you pa and password that you use to log into all of these. That is why it is called single sign-on. So it's a single sign-on. So you do not have like multiple credentials. Let's say you have one Yahoo account, one Gmail account, one uh, <coughs> some other account, right? So each one will have uh, some walmart.com account, amazon.com account. So we have different credentials for each account, right? So instead of that, in the organization, in the enterprise, what they'll do is they'll create a single sign-on. That way, they will enable single sign-on on all the applications that they're using, okay? And that way, with one single credentials, you'll be able to log into each and every, of, every one of these apps where single sign-on is enabled. They will enable single sign-on. So, for each and every application, uh, there will be some single sign-on uh, settings, okay? Single sign-on is enabled. So some of the single sign-on providers are, okay, Channel Secure is one provider, okay? SiteMinder is one such provider, okay? So basically these providers are nothing but uh, the companies, they, they are the companies that have the software that will integrate with all of these tools to enable you to log in, okay? This is about the login side, okay? Are you clear? Alice? I have a quick question. Uh, yeah. On like, uh, the single sign-on, uh, so each employer will have uh, a different uh, credential or all the employees will have same? 
no 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 each employee will have different credentials okay. but the credentials will be same for all applications okay. that right. the employee accesses sure, sure. Okay. thank you yeah yeah got it madhavi you clear uh yes Paul. okay 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 tools that we use at the client okay in general So one of the standard tools that everybody uses at the client is Microsoft Outlook. Okay. All emails will go through Microsoft Outlook. No Gmail. I mean, some organizations, they might use uh, Google Suite, but that's very few. Okay. Most of the organizations use Microsoft Outlook. Okay. So you need to know how to send out an email. Okay. Let me. So Microsoft Outlook is an application, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm using just uh, Outlook 365 that is on the cloud. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So when writing an email, right? This is how you need to write. Hi, whoever it is. Hi, Alice. Okay. The next line should start immediately below. Can you please let me know on this issue? Okay. And again, right below. Thanks. Power. Okay. There is, don't do like this. Some people, they think they have to do like this, like uh, basically one second. They have to give some space here. They have to write like this. No, don't. So you have to start from the beginning. It, everything has to align here and there will be again a signature here signature uh, you can get the format okay so start using outlook okay so that you will know like how to use what are the different features of outlook and all that okay so things to learn in outlook i'll just point out instead of me teaching all the things in outlook okay In Outlook or in Google Suite, what we need to know is um, okay. how to send a meeting invite. Okay. How do you send a meeting invite? Let's say you have some questions and you want to talk to somebody and they're not really available. Okay, what we do is we send out a meeting invite. So how do we send a meeting invite? Okay. And in the meeting invite, right? So this outlook is little different. The what you see in organization is little different. Let me see if I have it on my machine. No, I don't think I have. Uh, let me see. Okay. Here you see that.
new meeting okay take some time i guess okay. here email message appointment meeting so you here you create a new meeting okay and the title of the meeting should be whatever is the agenda of the meeting what you want to talk about required so whoever is required let's say okay so basically it's a microsoft teams meeting right uh, right now yeah here it is generating a microsoft teams meeting but in the organizations you will have skype some some organizations they use skype okay and some organizations they use teams Okay. depends okay so whoever is required fields here you put all the required members here whoever is optional maybe like a manager or somebody they are optional they need not attend the session or something like that right so you can put them in the optional okay and start date start time start date and time and date and time and here you have to check the scheduling assistant okay here you will see who is available at what time you see this so these these timings are booked okay there are some calls going on at this time these timings are all available so here all the attendees will be listed here and you can check whoever is needed for your meeting you have to check that they are available and then once you think they are available, then you can send it. Okay, I'm just sending it. Okay. So I just got this meeting in my right? So here. Mm, okay, okay. Just to meet. Okay. So once I get it to my inbox, actually, I have to accept that invite. Somebody, some people will be sending invites. So we accept that invite. Okay. So how to send a meeting invite, how to accept meeting invite. Okay. These are some basics that you guys need to know. Okay. And Skype. So everybody in the organization will be available for chatting. Okay, so either on Skype or on Microsoft Teams. Okay. What about this Microsoft Planner? What is it? Planner, Microsoft Planner. Planner? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about the SharePoint? Yes, because, yes, uh, I'm coming to that. Yeah, awesome. I'm coming to that. Okay. Awesome. So Skype or Microsoft Teams. Okay. This will be the communication platform. So if somebody pings you, you see this notification here, right? So you'll see something like this. You'll get a notification. And here also you'll get a pop-up. Okay, sometimes you'll get a pop up, sometimes you'll not. And whenever there is a meeting that is due in like 10 minutes or five minutes or so, you'll see another pop up that will come in Outlook. Okay. Okay. So these two. And the next one coming to work, right? So all the teams like they have their resources somewhere okay they generally use sharepoint or confluence okay so they keep all the documents that are related to the project there all documents related to the project are present in sharepoint 
or confluence you can a uh, confluence i think is free you can just uh, use it you can just create an account in confluence.com and i think you can try to use it okay and then uh, okay microsoft outlook skype microsoft teams okay and okay ticketing software so there are a lot of ticketing tools in the ticketing software or tools whatever you call it okay one such thing is uh, remedy service now okay uh, what are the tools we have jira mm, yeah jira to some extent yeah so do you guys know why we use this ticketing software or tools any idea okay to keep, to keep note so of the you, tickets yeah yeah pauna tell me to keep a uh, note of the tickets and uh, whether it is sold or it has to be sold and uh, um, assign it to someone mm, yeah yeah that's also one so you start off you got the laptop right okay so in general the procurement team they send the laptop okay but you don't have any kind of software on your machine okay or your skype is not working or you don't have access to confluence you don't have your microsoft outlook is not working okay so we create a ticket to that particular team to resolve issue okay or to install software or to give access to something okay whatever it is the reason okay so to that particular they will have that uh, team id or something like that so all the details you can get from uh, existing team members like uh, what team to submit the request to what is the name of the team etc most of these tools okay they have an option to copy a ticket or clone a ticket okay so you will be able to open one of the old ones you 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 can so ask your teammate for one of the old tickets and you can simply clone a ticket okay so it will copy all the details of the previous ticket to this ticket and you can just change the details in that and you can submit the request and then you can track the progress okay so the second use of this ticketing system is change request okay so are you guys aware of uh, different environments in an organization no no okay okay so uh, i'll explain it a little later so change request is basically a request to migrate a change from one environment to another okay okay so a request to basically you will submit all the details on the request to migrate the change from one environment to another okay 
see whatever you have done in the training is little different from whatever is in the real time so in training what we do is we are developing a project from scratch okay in real time we are going into a project that is already in place i mean somebody has already developed the project or they are already uh, done with 50% of the project most of the cases the project is already there you are not starting from scratch okay most of the cases the project is already there okay the data model is already designed tables are already defined data is already populated like that okay so most of the time it's that that's the case okay so you need to go there you need to understand what is the data there what is the data model what are the tables what are the key fields okay what is the data model tables joins key fields okay uh anything and everything about the data how it is getting modified modified in the sense insert delete update okay i have a quick question uh, Paul. yeah yeah uh, when you mentioned the change request there sorry to go back uh, to the previous question sure, sure. that's fine uh, but uh, because sometimes in the interview and all they are asking this question when you say change request you define that as a request to migrate the change from one environment to another so yeah. that i think uh, what does that mean like one environment in the sense the operating systems or like no no uh, no. no no i'll tell you I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's say you are a new developer who joined the team. Okay. And uh, the team already invested like maybe like two or three million dollars and they have a project that is running. Okay. So all of you are data analysts or Power BI developer or Tableau developer, whatever. You are dealing with data, right? Okay. So what uh, what's going to happen is I'll tell you the need for uh, different environments. Actually, so you are a developer. You went in, you joined newly, okay, and accidentally you dropped a table they already invested uh, 3 million and uh, everything is running do you think they will allow you to do that no i don't think so so backup should be there right <laughs> backup is the last option okay uh, so if they already invested 3 million and everything is running that means everything is running in a production environment okay everything is running in a production environment so production production environment is like the final environment like final product final product is production okay so people will not go in and touch anything here directly okay just because of the same reason i told you okay how expensive it is if you somebody like a new joinee 
they go in and drop a table that is being used in multiple reports. All reports will fail, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So production is something like uh, what you call in the temple, there'll be that uh, sanctum area, right? Nobody will enter. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah, got it. So yeah. it's like that. Nobody will enter there. Mm. Okay. So anything that will have to go here will go through a change request process. All requests, all changes to production will go through a change request process, okay? So how and all, I'll explain it a little later, okay? So this is a production environment, okay? But how will you as a developer do the development? So what is an environment? First of all, let me tell you that. Environment is nothing but a collection of uh, all, all infrastructure needed to run an application. Okay. So what are all the infrastructure needed? Okay, let's say, let's think about a database. Okay. What database did you guys use? SQL Server, right? Yes. Okay. So you guys use SQL Server database. So, for a SQL Server database to run, what all do you need? You need an operating yeah. system, right? Windows yeah. operating system. Yes, sir, right? Yes, yes. Right? Uh, you need, so for an operating system to run, you need a physical machine, right? Yeah or cloud machine, whatever, that has disk space, memory, disk space, memory, and whatever, internet, connectivity, everything, right? You need to be able to log in, right? Yeah. So this entire setup, this is just for database. Similarly, there are like several applications, okay? So database is one. Uh, if you have uh, Tableau on-premise, Tableau also think there is an on-premise and on-cloud, okay? If you have an on-premise, again, you will have all these, okay? You understand what I'm saying? An yes, environment, yes. about environment? Yeah. Okay. So it's a collection of everything, all of these infrastructure and all, mm -hmm. so that you will have access to an environment that is working. Okay. So a developer can't go in and work directly on production environment. Okay. So there will be something called a development environment. Okay, so this is where the developer will develop the code and he will test it. He will do the testing. Okay, 
so if i do the development and i do the testing is it okay is it enough to push it to production can i anybody qat mall should uh, test it right yeah so we will have a qa environment okay so code will whatever you develop it will be pushed from development to qa code will get pushed from dev to qa okay qa uat sat they have different names for that sit means system integration testing okay uat means user acceptance testing so different names they are called the qa environment they can have different names sometimes they call it sit sometimes they call it uat okay so code will get pushed from dev to qa sometimes what will happen is they will have sit and uat both okay depends on the client how they are using it so once this once the this is where the qa people will come will test and then if all the test cases are passed right then they will approve to move it to production okay so far clear so dev qa production got it yes but uh, as a data analyst you will be where are we there in that uh, chain what you have mentioned so you will be here to develop it okay okay and you will make sure it's working here okay okay if there are any issues again you have to go back to dev make the changes push them to qa get it approved by qa and then move them back to production mm -hmm. okay yeah okay so clear right pavana yes pavan okay okay <clears throat> so far you guys are following me right okay so how do we move this code so now i told you the code will move from dev to qa to production right okay so uh, when i say code i mean anything okay whether it is a report whether it is a python uh, code whatever or a database script whatever code it is doesn't matter okay uh tableau report or bi report whatever or uh, database script okay how do we move the code does anybody know how do how do we move the code between environments what's the process any guesses some companies use jenkins yep 
So this is called the DevOps. So the DevOps team, they will prepare one pipeline. Create a pipeline. A pipeline is nothing but what are all the tools that we need to use. See if sometimes Python code may use a different tool. Tableau report may use a different tool. Power BI report may use a different tool. Database script may use a different tool. Okay. So let's say pipeline is uh, nothing but uh, path. Okay. They will create a deployment path. Okay. So in general, Python, right? Python, Java, and all, we use GitHub, okay? So in GitHub, there are like different branches, okay? There will be one dev branch. So you can watch uh, some uh, video on uh, the GitHub, okay? GitHub branches, okay? So there will be a dev branch, there will be a QA branch, there will be a production branch, okay? So we have to follow a process. Basically the code will get uh, moved from dev to QA and QA to production through GitHub, okay? So you can watch a video of GitHub in general on YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing much actually. GitHub is a small extension. You install it on your machine and uh, it will have access to your uh, local uh, Windows Explorer, the call the folders, files, and everything. So you put the files in a certain location on your computer, and then you say that uh, commit to QA, then send to QA. So when you click on that the GitHub uh, button, it will move to QA. Similarly for production, okay? But in general, we will not have access to move the code to production. Okay, there'll be a deployment team that will actually move the code to production. Okay. So that's for like, uh, for Tableau, for database script. Sometimes we use, uh, GitHub is widely used. Sometimes we use GitHub, sometimes we use SVN. So Tableau, I'm not sure actually. Maybe you guys can research, okay? Tableau report, uh, the deployment tool. You guys can do some research. What all, what is used? Do you guys know what is the Tableau deployment tool? Anybody knows? As no, far no. as I know, I don't think so. They have any tool. Uh, there's a Tableau server. And then once yeah. you are ready with the worksheets and all uh, in the dashboard, you publish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's on cloud, maybe. Yeah. yeah. It could be. But anyways, we can clarify that. I mean, we can check with that. Similarly, Power BI also. Uh, there'll be some, some tool. Or otherwise, we can directly deployed to cloud, okay? So here, one, one important thing to keep in mind is version control, okay? Let's say whatever code you sent to production failed, okay? It's not working anymore. So there is some issue in production and your code is not working. It's they're working in dev, but it's not working in production, okay? So production is the most critical environment, right? Everybody is using production. The live, uh, whoever has requested all the reports and everything, they are using production, okay? So if something is not working in production, it will become a huge issue, okay? Everybody will join on the call, Everybody is going to discuss about how to resolve the issue. 
so all the teams will come into one call to resolve that issue in production okay so then what we do is let's say you deployed version 45 into prod and it failed okay then what they'll do is immediately they'll get to a call and they will deploy version 44 back into production whatever code was running before they'll make sure that code is there immediately okay understood Mm, are you guys with me or have you lost here? Yes, Pavan, I understood. Okay. Alice? Yeah, yeah, good, good. But I have a quick question. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, is GitHub also a version control tool? Like. Yes, it oh. is. Yeah. yeah. Right. GitHub Thank is a version control tool. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So, Pavan, I have a question here. So, yeah. uh, the uh, version 45 failed. So, we are we are deploying 44 back to production i mm -hmm. mean previous previous version yes previous version because 44 is already there in production and is currently working okay okay so you deployed 45 and it suddenly it's, it failed okay. it stopped working okay so then what you have to do is you have to go back to the old version oh, okay yeah. and then figure out the issue okay yeah got it. okay then go back to the drawing, go back to dev again, figure out what is the issue with production, then push it to QA and then again go back to production. That's the cycle. Any code will not go to production directly. Okay. It should be tested, it should be approved. Then only it will go to production. Okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's take this scenario where this failed right so general i'm just wanted to explain the process how it goes right something failed in production what will happen is uh, as i told there will be an emergency procedure production means emergency okay keep that in mind anything production issue that's kind of treated as like an emergency in any organization, okay? So what we'll do, uh, generally all teams, all relevant teams will get on a call, okay? On call, okay? Then change request, right? So we'll have something called emergency change request, okay? or like an incident and they call it with different names okay so change request where did we discuss that change request yes right one second here change request right so what uh, what i missed here is lead time okay lead time for CR. CR means change request. Okay. Whenever I submit a change request, it can't, they will not, it will not uh, be granted immediately. Okay. Whenever I submit a request, there are like several teams that will approve the request. Okay. There are several dependent teams like on the audit teams, management teams, basically like different teams that will have to approve that request. And after they approve that request, then the CR will be scheduled. CR means change request again, okay? And that too, if I submit today, uh, it will be scheduled for next week. So, submit on 
May 10th, okay, scheduled for May 17th, okay. Understood? This is the general, general, general change request. Got it? This is called lead time. Lead time means from the time you submit till the time of implementation. It is seven days lead time. Understood? Guys, are you with me? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. And in case of an emergency procedure, right, there will be an emergency change request. Okay. For this, the lead time is zero. That means no waiting period. Okay. So whenever it is submitted, it has to be worked on immediately. Okay. Whatever teams are needed, everybody will be on the call to resolve the issue and they will do all types of changes that are needed to get it back up and running okay just keep in mind uh, for production any kind of production issues that's the procedure okay mm, okay i think Deployment. Uh, okay. Now coming to question, Pawan. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Who's me. going to decide whether it is emergency or not? Like, uh, because these are the questions sometimes uh, they ask in the, you know, I think you understand what I'm saying. Uh, so, who is going to decide? Basically, yeah. it will be the everything in the project is driven by. Business users. Okay. Okay. So what business users means is that any report you develop, any code you write, everything is driven by business users. Okay, these are the key people here. Okay, so business, what is a business user? A business user can be anything, depending on the application. Anybody can be business user. In general, uh, business users are on the finance side or supply chain side, like whatever is the domain, right? A business user is a person who requests certain type of data from the team. See, uh, whenever you are hired into a team, you are into an IT team, okay? Most often you are into an IT team. You'll have an IT manager and there'll be a set of developers in the team, set of developers, QA and all, okay? But what do we develop, okay? Whatever we have to develop, it will come from the business users, okay? So in the team, there'll be a BA in the IT team, there'll be a business analyst or a data analyst, whatever you call it, okay? Sometimes, most of the times it's business analyst and uh, sometimes it's data analyst, okay? So what the business analyst is going to do is they are going to talk to the business users. So business users, uh, let me give you some examples. Uh, let's say it's a finance uh, application, then it's a finance users <coughs> or sometimes uh, CTO, CEO. Generally they have, uh, they are the business users in general, like many um, for many of the reports, okay? So anybody uh, basically like these are all business people. They, they don't deal much with IT, okay? They are going to tell, okay, uh, tell me one data model, what uh, uh, 
what you guys are working on. Uh, Nadvi, what is your data model? Trade discrepancies, right? Yeah, trade, yeah. Okay. So what I'll say, I'm the, let's assume I'm the business user, okay? I'll say uh, to your manager or to you directly, I'll say like, okay, Madhavi, I need a trade uh, discrepancy report. Uh, for trades that happen between the trades that happen between Jan to March 2022 and uh, exclude these business units from those reports. Okay, so the business user is, they are going to just say that, okay, this. Okay, this is what they're going to tell. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Trade discrepancy reports for trades that happened between Jan to March, okay and exclude these business units in the report, okay? So then what we have to do is business analyst or data analyst, okay? Then they have to dig into the data. They need to understand the data model, tables, okay? How to get to the data, how to get to the trade discrepancies. So within the tables, how can I get the trade discrepancy data? Okay. And what are the period columns that I need to use to filter this data? January to March. Okay. And what are the fields for this business unit? A, B, C, how do I exclude them? Okay. So you need to think about all of these details. Okay. So this is the requirement that is given, okay? Sometimes what they'll do, they'll just send uh, Excel, okay? They'll give an Excel report, okay? Generate uh, similar data for me. For different time period, okay? So, when they give an Excel, and then not Excel, put Excel file, I would say, okay? So when they give an Excel file, it will have a certain columns, right? What are all the columns that uh, are need to be included in the report? It will have all those details, okay? Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay. So they'll give an Excel file and we have to generate a similar data for similar time period. Sometimes they'll ask, okay. Uh, trades. Uh, so let's say there is an issue sometimes, okay? What will happen is uh, they're not seeing some data. Okay. Or um, what will happen? Sometimes uh, they are in a very old system, okay? and they need to convert into a new system, okay? So old system is called legacy system. Okay, 
new system is a uh, new application whatever okay old system is something like very old software okay they have been using that application for a long time like 10 years 20 years like that and now they want to move into a new system like a new modern tool okay like a java based tool or a salesforce based tool or sap or a tool, whatever okay so this is called conversion data conversion okay so like there are like different types of needs with a data analyst okay either they can ask for a report or they can report an issue related to a report or a table data in a report table okay or they are converting from an old old system to new system so when we, whenever we are doing a data conversion what we need to do we need to understand the old system where how it is working how the data is present in the old system and how we need to convert the data into new system okay and sometimes what will happen is uh, we need to send data to a different system or receive data from a different system in an enterprise like there are like multiple systems right multiple applications right so for hr we use one with for finance we use one for supply chain we use one so like there are different source systems you call them source systems actually okay source systems target system okay source is uh, whatever is the source of data and target is where the data is loaded okay so so these are called like inbound and outbound interfaces. Sir. So if we need to send send data to a different uh, source, different system, it is called outbound because it's outbound because we are sending the data. And if we are receiving them data from somewhere else, it is called inbound. Okay. So far, so good. Yes. Okay. Pavana? Yes, Pavana. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you guys have to remember these terminologies. Okay. Outbound, inbound, legacy system. Okay. Uh, especially during interviews, they might be looking for those keywords. <coughs> To understand that okay you really worked okay so now you got the requirements okay and let's say there are like 100 reports you can't work directly on the 100 reports right you are the only developer or maybe there are a couple of other developers okay a hundred reports and uh, 20 issues with uh, reports and uh, <laughs> 10 interfaces interface is nothing but a file okay so whatever data you send right this is called an interface they call it an interface outbound interface and inbound interface 10 interfaces you have to develop something like that okay so you have all these so there needs to be some planning, right? Who is going to work on what, right? You can't just start with one report and say that, okay, these 99 reports, 20 issues and uh, 10 interfaces have to wait until I finish that one report, right? There'll be, there should be some planning going on, right? Guys? Yes. You with me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That planning is called agile. Okay. So that planning that uh, it's called SDLC, software development lifecycle. 
okay so in software development life cycle how many of you are from computer science background i am pavan uh, uh who pavan pavan okay okay have you heard of sdlc yes yes pavan okay okay software software development life cycles okay okay Alice, do you know anything about software development life cycle? Alice, you're on mute. Yes, yes, Pawan. Yeah, sure. Okay, Madhavi. Yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. I have little bit idea. Okay, okay, got it. So main things that you need to do know in SDLC is waterfall. There are like two methodologies, main important methodologies. There are others, but we need not worry about those things. Okay, waterfall and agile. So waterfall means. uh waterfall in the what what waterfall means is that everything will go in sequence okay so first requirements gathering okay first we have to gather the requirements what is needed okay what is needed here what are all the requirements like 100 reports 20 issues 10 interfaces so for each and every report i'm going to gather the requirements uh, for each all 20 issues i'm going to gather the requirements all 10 interfaces i'm going to gather requirements whatever time it takes okay for all these i think so i would say like three months okay so requirements gathering so uh after the requirements gathering. So in requirements gathering, what we have to do is we have to document all these requirements in business requirements document. Okay, that's the first step. So you'll document all the requirements in business requirement document. Each client will have their own format. For this business requirement document. Either we can use that, or if they don't have their own format, then we'll use something. I mean, we can just get it some, get some format and we can use it, okay? After the requirements gathering is done, then analysis. Okay. So I think analysis, one second. Okay, system design. Implementation, testing, deployment, maintenance. Okay. Analysis for design, you can say both. So basically, you will design, you will prepare a design document. Okay. Design document, or you call it a technical specification document. Okay. TRD, technical requirements document. Call it different names. Different people call it with different names. Okay. So after this analysis or design is complete, what will what you'll know in the design? Okay. So let's say we take a report, right? Okay. Uh, I'll say like uh, use tables. A, B, and C, okay? Uh, join them with their uh, key fields, 
okay add these filters etc whatever is the design it's not fully technical okay basically you are not writing any kind of code you are not showing any kind of code here but you are giving all the technical details here okay and then implementation so implementation is when you write the code the actual technical code in development environment okay okay so once you write the code what will happen next earlier we discussed right after you develop the code what will we do testing okay we'll do the testing in testing there will be some documents called test cases okay so test case is nothing but uh, different types of uh, what i would say okay let's say let's say you have a report right uh, let's say i give uh, the criteria of uh, dates right dates 510 to 517 the report has to show data let's say the report is not showing data okay so test case failed okay if the report shows data test case passed generally there will be like a small excel template where we'll mention all the test cases for the report okay to so make sure like okay the report is working as expected as expected by the business users okay they are the ones who are driving everything right they are the ones who are going to tell okay this is how i need the data so once the testing is done then deployment okay so deployment we spoke about deployment right we'll create a change request and then you will use some tools to do the deployment of code from one environment to another okay and after deployment what is it maintenance or production support they call it. in general they call production support or maintenance what maintenance means is that okay uh, so let's say we are using microsoft operating system right Microsoft releases security patches every now and then, right? Okay. So let's say we installed a security patch and suddenly the report stopped working, right? So at the end of the day, we need the report to work, right? Whatever things have to go on, okay? Things have to go on, whatever may happen, right? so microsoft uh, patch is failed or microsoft whatever whatever is the issue you upgraded to a latest version and this uh, report is not working or browser is not working so users will have like different types of issues okay so in general users uh, report issues any kind of uh, production issues will be handled during the production support okay this is waterfall what in waterfall what will happen is everything will go in sequence okay once you complete the requirements gathering for 3 months then you go to analysis then you go to implementation then you go to testing then you go to deployment then you go to maintenance okay let's say after 3 months when you are in the implementation phase requirements changed okay let's say government updated some rules so the requirements have changed so what will happen in waterfall you will again go back to requirement gathering phase again start from scratch so it's a waste of time 
it's a very time consuming process very 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 few clients use waterfall methodology most of the clients they use agile methodology okay agile is something like okay if you have 100 reports 20 issues 10 interfaces i will split this into four sprints okay so each sprint in general lasts two weeks okay sprint is nothing but a term that they call this entire two weeks time period they'll call it as a sprint okay so sprint 1 25 reports sprint 2 25 reports similarly sprint 3 sprint 4 sprint 3 sprint 4 okay so actual the actual work unit is reports but in terms of agile we call it a user story okay a user story can be anything okay it can be a report it can be an interface it can be an issue that you need to resolve it can be anything a user story is something like a unit of work to do. Okay. All right. Are you guys with me? Yes. Okay. So it's within this, yeah, within sprint one, all these 25 reports, everything should happen here. Everything should happen within the two weeks. Requirements, design, implementation, testing, deployment. Okay. These 25 reports, everything will happen within these two weeks. Okay. So, in general, uh, while uh, in Agile, what will happen is there will be one sprint call, sprint kickoff meeting. Okay. So generally, it will last for around two to three hours. Everybody will be on the call. Entire team will be on the call. Okay. And they are going to ask you. Okay. So basically, what will happen? This 100 reports, they will split it into 100 different user stories. Okay. And they will ask you, the developer, how many hours each story will take. Okay. So you will respond, okay, story one, I'll say 20 hours, story two, 12 hours, story three, whatever, uh, 16 hours, like that. You are going to tell them, okay? So what they're going to do is, they're going to calculate all these hours. So in two weeks, how many hours you'll have? You'll have 80 hours, right? 40 hours per week. So you'll have total 80 hours to work, right? So based on the hours that you give, they're going to say, okay, uh, I don't think uh, we can do 25 reports. So maybe you work on five reports. Okay, so there'll be a discussion in the call. There'll be a scrum master, okay? They will lead the call. 
they will be the one who will organize the call okay organize the call they will discuss with all team members okay and they will then assign the user stories to each team member okay got it guys yes. are you clear yeah. so every two weeks there will be one sprint kickoff meeting there everybody will discuss how many stories how many hours each user story will take and uh, based on that based on the bandwidth of the team they are going to assign different stories to different team members story is nothing but a unit of work okay it can be anything okay alice Hello. yes yeah yeah got it yeah okay okay and uh, the software that they use to do to do all this is jira okay so jira is the software that they use in jira they will create user stories and those user stories in jira there will be a small field called assign to okay so in that they will mention the team member's name. Okay. So once it is assigned, so all the stories will be on your plate. So you have to work on them. Uh, some teams, what they expect you to do is at the end of each day, You have to give some update to the story. Okay. So in Jira, once you log in, you will be able to access the story. So you'll have something called comments. Okay. So you'll have to put the comments in Jira. And uh, in some some projects, not all, they'll also ask you to, uh, they'll also ask you to enter the number of hours worked on that story. Okay. Got it? Yes, Baba. Yeah. So on a day, you can work on multiple stories, right? So eight hours, uh, you'll have eight hours, right? So I'll say, okay, I work on this story, I worked only a couple of hours. I worked on another story for uh, maybe like three or four hours. So you can, at the end of the day, you have to enter like, okay, this is my eight hour split, like this story, I worked two hours, three hours, like that. And meetings and all, uh, they might happen, right? So that's one thing. And as part of this, right, every day we'll have a daily stand-up call. Okay. Daily stand-up call is nothing but, again, a team meeting in the morning. Okay. Uh, basically, you are updating the team. What did you do yesterday? what you want to do today okay and are there any blockers blockers in the sense like uh, sometimes right we get stuck okay we are dependent now we are dependent on some other team we are dependent on some other team okay so in those cases, that is called a blocker. So basically in the daily stand-up call, we are going to tell them, okay, I have a blocker. So I have a dependency on some other team. So until 
they give me what i need i can't proceed further so it could be anything sometimes we don't have access okay we might have to request somebody sometimes uh, uh, we need some data from somebody and they are on leave right so it could be any reason so in the daily stand up call we have to give them the update okay what we did yesterday what i want to do today and are there any blockers okay i mm, think that is pretty much it any questions anybody ali my question pavan yeah uh if we are working uh, remotely uh, how do you connect to the server good question okay as part of this tools right i think i missed one <laughs> that's what you pointed out it's called vpn okay VPN is virtual private network. Okay. See, uh, I I am on my own uh, IP address. I am on my own network, right? So for me to be able to connect to all the client databases, client uh, tools, and everything. i need to connect to a vpn vpn is nothing but a small software cisco vpn uh symantec vpn there are like different tools these are all different software okay so once i log in to this vpn i will be connected to the client's network okay so getting on to client's network means that you are on the client's network you your uh, you will get basically your connection is trusted by the client once you get on the vpn what it means is that it's a secure connection to the client's network okay so once you connect then you will be able to access all the clients uh, anything on the client's network like that you have access to whether it is database or uh, reporting tools whatever okay and how do we transfer files um, to the network on is it through transfer kita files or files from where from my system to i mean uh, to upload whatever files i have worked uh, from where to where from my system your system to uh, to the database or something like that it's just uh, through the git we do that yeah yeah through yeah through the deployment tools okay okay yeah. one thing i forgot to mention here is uh, network share network share is something like uh, network share is something like it's a windows drive but that uh, folder is shared with everybody in the network like your team especially they will have access to one uh, windows folder so that you will map it to your uh, d drive here like this you will see here map network drive so here you will give you will get the location whatever is the location of that shared folder you will put it here and you will uh, connect that so that way once you are in your in your pc 
you will see it is a different drive that is mapped here. Okay, that is called network share. That's another form of uh, that's another way of sharing documents within the teams. Okay. Uh, Pavan, other than GitHub, are there is there any option of uh, transferring the code and all? Uh, in general, it will go through GitHub only. There'll oh. be, I mean, there could be manually you can copy, mm -hmm. but in general, most of the clients will not prefer that. Everybody wants to do some kind of version control. Okay. Thank okay. you. Because they don't want to risk their systems, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Alice, I covered pretty much everything. Do you think yeah, yeah. anything yeah. else you need? <laughs> Until I take one more interview, they come up with some <laughs> different questions. <laughs> now I, I have all the answers what they asked me in the previous interviews. I okay. think uh, this will suffice. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, sure. So, Pavan, uh, once we get the job, uh, do we get any support initially if we get any doubts or something? Uh, yeah, we can, yeah, we can, we can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. Pavan, can you share me this recorded session? Uh, I was uh, I couldn't attend first 30 minutes. Okay, as usual, 